What's going on here? Kind of windblown, guys. Just came in. Just came inside. We have like 60 mile an hour winds going on. And how is everybody besides that? What's going on? What's new in your life? Did you get frustrated today at the Apple store like I did? Um, I love you, Kat. ACDC, you were coming home from work the other day when I was talking to Uncle Dave. Hey, Lumen. Mods, thank you for being here. Jenny gets chatty. Teresa. You have a crazy last name. I don't know how to pronounce, but hi, Teresa. Mara's here. Uh, Paula Popper. I don't know what you mean by laminating stickers, Paula, but it sounds awful. Robin Miners, love you, girl. Oh, you're just popping in right now. Guys, Tommy wants to say hi to everybody. We're going on his show tonight for the call-in. I think he's just coming to announce it. Oh, no, I was coming to check out your hair. I'm leaving. That's what I was doing. I was coming to check Hello out your brother. hair. What's that? Hello to your brother. Uh, oh, he was walking outside. We uh, we got sunburned. Can you see? I can. Yeah. Oh man, I built that uh, that thing. What's it called again? I told pergola. you. But pergola. Yeah. The problem is Johnny called it something ludicrous, and now that's stuck in my head. What did you call it? What? That thing outside. Uh, Palermo. Palermo. Yeah, pergola is what it is. But we pulled up and he goes, you know, you build a damn Palermo and everybody's at your house because we pulled up and there were two cars here. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not uh, Palermo. How you been? No, Fine. He, he can't even hear you, so you don't have to lie. He's a, he's, you know, a little slow, but he's in the other room. He can't hear you. I like the hair. What do you mean? It's not any different than any other day. That's not true at all. It's completely different than any other day. Okay. But by uh, by tonight, can we uh, swap those out for the uh, the smaller shades that you know I love? Or I don't know what you mean by smaller. Most of my glasses are large because that style is incredibly outdated. What are you trying to say? <laughs> huh? Incredibly outdated. Incredibly. Hi, Laura FM. Laura FM's in here. No way. Matrix Rabbit, love you. Take a compliment. Hey, Matrix Starfish. Rabbit. Starfish, you're always full of kind things. Um, so what are you doing? Well, I was stopping in to say hi. I wanted to see what you're wearing. You know, it's always fun. Glasses wise? <laughs> Sorry. Accessory. Is, is that is that better, Quibble? Uh, are you happy now? Hold on. That's good. That's actually no. a lot more. I like that better. See, I, th I thought that you would uh, you would groove to this more. I have them in eight colors. So. Prison, Prison stripes? stripes? No, oh. they're not. Prison stripes are like that wide. They're, not uh, to mention half. They're very this, wide whaled. This is a puff sleeve, which is very girly half. And um, I did it with a little bit of a pop of red. It's um, also kind of 80s. Anything that does anything with the shoulders. This little pop of bread, Tommy. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Uh, I have. Those are those uh, those sparkly ones yeah. they make in um, Italy, I believe. Aren't they, aren't they handmade in Italy? No, these Small are batch. Off. These are knockoffs. Small batch. <laughs> you, there's no way you own a knockoff. There is no way you own a knockoff. These it is very 80s all over. Counterfeit. So anyway... Uh, yeah, I like those glasses better as well, Michelle. Um, thank yeah. you, Bo. Um, you should style Tommy. Trust me, if I lived anywhere yeah. near him. I'm snagging something behind you. Knock yourself out. Sorry about that. We're unprofessional. I'm not worried about it. She's doing a good job, but we're not. Um, who's wanting me to style what? I'm not looking good. I was building, I was building a Palermo, damn it. You don't get dressed up to build a Palermo. You're outside and it's hot as hell. It's... Are you mocking me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. I am mocking you. Mm -hmm. But I forgot what it was called already. So, uh, uh... yeah, so you don't know either. You just said Palermo again. Well, I built one of those things. Pagola. Polygamy. Pagola? Polygamy. Pretty sure it's not Pagola either. What? A polygamy? No, no polygamy. Kestrel, we are not. I don't know, Kestrel, if you realize I took that video down. Um, wait a second. You took a video down? I did. Why did you take a video down? 
Um, because actually, Kestrel, I think you're one, you're the one that started that last night, actually. Um, just people were asking, we were talking. Was is this a subject I shouldn't ask? Because I'm I'm cool with subjects I shouldn't ask. I get that. All right. Yeah. You were in Floral Park and NHP today. Um I would uh I would have loved to have been. Instead, I was building a Palermo and ugly, man. It's hot here. I don't think you have any idea. Kestrel, it was all you. <laughs> um, yeah, Big Z, you know, yeah, that's fine. Tommy, I'll talk to you about it sometime if you ever, uh, if you found my phone number. I'll resend it to you. I know that you probably lost it, but sometime I'll tell you privately. Shall I check when the last time I said something to you? Because I could do that. Oh, you're right. It's been a long time. I apologize. It has. Uh, what are we doing tonight on your show? 17 minutes. Um, I, well, here's what's going to happen. I'm about to hang up because I have to go run an errand. I haven't been able to do anything leaving here. I've been here all day long, so I have to go run an errand. I am going to hang up on you. I'm going to get in my car. Hopefully, it's going to start, and then I'm going to drive over uh, and run an errand. Then I'm going to come back. What are we going to do tonight? We are going to uh, to get on there and start talking. And you know the you know the the uh, the deal. Uh, we uh, we will get silly at some point. We'll probably get really poignant and deep and heavy at some point because that's kind of how we roll. You know, no? I'm really, I really like those call in shows, and I hope that eventually they get kind of uh, like into subjects. I love saying hi to people, but I think it would be fun for someone to call in like with a question or an issue and try to solve their life for them. I think that that's a, it's, and it's usually the, uh, the direction that we go. I, I talked about this on the, uh, on the show. I, I said, you know, I think that that, that'll happen once kind of the, uh, you know, the bloom kind of wears off kind of, you know, in the beginning, it's just the, uh, the idea of, Oh my God, I can call in, but I think that that wears off. How does it go? Oh my God, look at you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is how it goes though. And it, and it will happen tonight. I promise. Um, I just think I want to get into the deep stuff though. Cause I think I'm very qualified to go deep. Yeah. Why do you say that? I've always felt qualified myself. Have you really? <laughs> yes. At least I'm in right. the last eight years or so after reading all those books. That's the rumor. That is okay. the, uh, is the, that's the rumor. Okay. Right. So I'm going to go, well, I'm going to go uh, run, uh, when am I going to see you again in a few hours? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we need to get there a little bit early. So uh, no. So before the time starts, you want me to be there early? Oh, because it's Zoom. So we'll get set up on that. We have to do all of that. Yeah, we got to do all that setup and all that stuff. But uh, yeah. so get there a little early and we can we can hang out. And okay. then have those serious, deep conversations we have before we go live all the time. I like to go deep. Uh, that's the word. That is. Okay. Uh, that's the word around town. I'm just uh, bye, Bo. Bye, I'm everybody. trying not to get myself into trouble. We'll see you later. Oh, you'll get into trouble later. Yeah, try not to do anything you got to cancel at a later date, huh? I don't want to get in trouble on my yeah. own. Just your chance. <laughs> see okay. if you can maybe, maybe uh, you know, maybe edit I'll yourself beforehand. Change right? I'll change the beforehand. Thank you. I'm going to put on my horn rimmed glass uh, round ones for you. All right. See you later. All righty. See ya. Well, um, guys, by the way, hello. I didn't get to do uh, everybody saying goodbye. I don't know if you're leaving me in general. Uh, JD, I am so happy to see you. I asked about you. I texted your sister. Um, oh, Kestrel, you're totally fine. That was a joke. It's fine. Um, how is everybody? What's new? Like I said, did anybody else freak out at the Apple store today like I did? The Apple store, uh, they don't know what they're doing. And I was concerned for them. I was like, do I need to apply for a job here? Guys, I went in there asking questions and three different people that worked there were like, I don't know the answer to that. I was trying to buy an iPad. I'm not buying one today, but for the future and when I can save up and get one, I want to get an iPad. And I was like, does it do this, this, and this? Because I stream on my channel and they were like, I don't know. I was like, what, what do you mean you don't know? What does that mean? Um, hi, Susan Miller. Uh, yeah. Hello again, Kat, ACDC van. What is SOSDFD, Reese? What does that mean, Brian? 
Uh, Tara smiling. I love you. We chatted on the phone. You had the best questions ever. And plus you're really cute. Thank you for coming over to my channel, Tara. That's really sweet. Hi, V McWilliams, Lori E, Fancy Nancy, Jeanette Rexford, um, Matrix. I'm so glad you're here. Joe Virus, Dusty Joe. Love you, Joe. Uh, Got to go feed the deer and rescue. Okay, that's adorable, Chow Yun Smile. I kind of miss you, Cricket. Um, yeah, what do we do in calling this place a genius bar if we can't answer questions about our own products? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't want to get too nitpicky, but um, it got weird. Uh, well, I want to get a damn iPad. Hi, VT Kitten. I appreciated your uh, your message on Facebook, by the way. That was really kind. Hi, Carrie Wilson. Yeah, JD, I really miss you. Bo, you got your iPad online? Well, I don't want to get an iPad without knowing I can stream uh, taking it with me. Um, out of town and stuff. And so it got so weird. Keela, that is so kind. Keela, everybody's going to love you for that too. Thank you, Keela. You don't have to do any more though, but thank you. Um <laughs> You're not kidding. Um, hi, Anita. So I was like, what did I say? I just lost track of what I was, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I want to, Mike, this computer is really heavy to travel with. Uh, thank you, Bella. You too, Liz Tricks. I had so much fun with you today. Uh, Carrie, I can call. I just want an iPad because it's lightweight and I want to be able to stream from that when I go out of town. That's all. I just, you know. Call me fancy, um, but I want to figure that out. I was going to ask Aaron. That's a good idea. Hey, Alana. Um, yeah, Bo, I'm just trying to figure figure out some things in my life to make better choices and follow a path. Uh, you love Tommy, Annika's mom? Who doesn't? I just, um, first of all, I want to start off on a good note. Guys, I'm quite fancy. You think so? Um, I do too. I would love to start a clothing line. No joke. I would love to. Um, yeah, JD, any update on when you and Tommy will come East? I have to ask him. I don't know. I would love to do that sooner than later. Um, I don't know what that means. Thank you, Pam. The most fancy. Oh my. I'm going to ask Aaron about the iPad situation. I don't know what that means. Brittany, you're welcome for last night's chat. Hey, Carrie Ann. Thank you, Dawn. <clears throat> Get your iPad at Costco. I could do that. Okay. So I wanted to say, I, we did, um, yeah, that's what I was going to say, Keila, right there. Can I just say, I truly enjoyed meeting you all today. Um, we did uh, a Zoom call with the uh, Fred and Gertie membership tiers. And it was so, Mara, are you still going to Arizona this month? I am. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, guys, I have to answer this. Okay, uh, I am going. Anyway, we did the Zoom call and it was so much fun. And I just wanted to say thank you again. Yes, I did, Rosalang. I wanted to say thank you again to you guys because it was so much fun. I, I think, well, hi. Hi. Punky's been really needy all weekend. And, uh, well, yes, JD, did you JD? Oh, that makes me sad. Mark Hardman was there, you guys. And I got to meet him and he's so adorable. And Mark, I forgot to tell you, I love your voice. Uh, but it was so much fun. You guys, it was so much fun. Um, Chow just left. 
Chow Yun Smat went to feed the deer and the birds. Robin W, you were there. It was so much fun. I loved meeting you. And thank you for sharing what you did. I can stream from my iPad. The thing is, oh, I just got, guys, it's a problem. Because it was rain virus, the, the, the Zoom call is for um, the Gertie and the Fred tier. So I don't do the Zoom call with everybody, but it's for the Gertie and the Fred tier of the memberships for now. Um, what? I feel like I'm all over the place all of a sudden. Okay, the lip stain. I don't have much lip. Do you use a lip liner and a lip brush? No, not at all. I just... And you know, even though you don't have a lot of lip, you can do it. You can go outside a little bit of it. I've done that. It's no big deal. Um, so it's weird. On the iPad, he said that, and this doesn't matter that much, but I just want to say, the guy said, I didn't know this, first of all, there's iOS, there's like Mac, and there's iOS, and they're two totally different softwares. So your iPhone has iOS. My Mac has no matrix rabbit. My Mac has different software. So I don't know that I can just go stream on an iPad the same. I would have to do it like I do it from my phone, which is just weird. It was super confusing to me. Hey, Skyrider. DNV, your comments did not make me feel like you, like I needed to take down my video. No, DNV, I love you. Guys, I just got, I'll, I'll just address this real fast. I'm sorry you felt you had to remove another video. Uh, you're so wonderful to share your life with. It's a shame. I appreciate that, Ruthie. Guys, it's not the end of the weird world. Uh, it's just, okay, I can do it. I, I, was, I was like, how could I not do it from an iPad? Um, yeah, Bo, it was weird. I didn't know. Apple is confusing. And it's not like I'm an Apple snob. I just know Apple technology the best. I'm not one of those people where I'm like, everything has to be Apple. Now my phone does. I'd have to have an Apple. I, I've always had an iPhone. There's no way I could switch to something else. Anyway, um, guys, it's not that I'm going to go into private stuff. The, the gist of last night, I got quite a few private messages and emails of people like going, how could you do this? Or how could you? And I kind of got tired of it. And then I got a couple of weird emails that I'll be honest. Do you want to know why I really took it down? I didn't care so much about the judgments, about what I was saying uh, about Tommy. Honestly, I, I don't really, I hate to say this. I made, I, I lost a lot of subscribers last night. I don't really care. Like to me, you weren't meant to be here anyway. Like we're not really friends if that's how you feel and you don't support me. And I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel how I used to feel about this channel. I used to be like, no, please stay, wait. Mm, I don't feel that way. If you don't feel supportive, um, I don't need you here. I want you to go find something else and enjoy your life. I don't wish you ill will, but just don't stick around and judge me like you've never done anything that was worth being judged for. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't like those kinds of comments anyway, because it makes me go, wow, like, and do you live a life of perfection? Like, Everything that comes out of your mouth is not offensive to somebody. I don't know. It's such a stupid way of thinking to me when people are that judgmental. I just want to say like, what a stupid thing to say. What a stupid idea that you even have that like you felt the need to, this is my channel. You know what bothered me though? I'm going to be honest, had nothing to do with Tommy. I got a couple of, um, <laughs> Joe virus, you judge me all the time and I allow for it. I make wiggle room for you. I will not be put in a box. Here's what it was guys. Last night I went into some talk about Fred because we're coming up on the death date and I cried and I was fairly upset and a couple people messaged me. Thank you, Michelle. And said, um, you talk too much about Fred and you're losing subscribers because of it. And then somebody else said, you're really obsessed and like stuck in that. And you need to stop talking about it. And I was like, okay, now I'm just taking it down because I'm upset about that. And I probably shouldn't have. I don't really care about the other subject we were talking about. I, I, that part actually didn't bother me at all. Um, when people, I mean, I get it so much less than I used to. But the facts are this. 
It's split right down the middle. Half of you love me and Tommy doing shows together. Half of you were like, oh my God, I love you and Tommy. You guys have changed everything for me. I love how a man and a woman can totally interact. And then I get emails from the other half that are like, I really don't like you and Tommy. This is the Reese show, not the Reese and Tommy show. I don't like him. I hate bald people. Uh, he's crimmy. His real name isn't Tommy. I get a lot of that. So it's so weird. I get the 50-50 of like, I either love the heck out of you and Tommy. I can't get enough of you two or bleh, I hate it. And I'm, I'm over that. I, I don't really care if you don't like it. And some of you are my friends. Some of you are my close friends who could, you will message me and say, hey, Shelly, I don't like you and Tommy, but I support you. I love you. And I just leave when you guys are on. I love you for that. You're allowed to have your own opinion and you're even allowed to share it with me. And I'm not upset with that at all. And I want you to be my friend because a friend should be allowed to do that without being judged or, you know, anything like that. It's okay if you don't like certain things. I also have people who love me to death, but they message me and say, when you talk about your vagina, I don't like it and I leave. But I come back because I love you. Again, I'm totally fine with that. You're still my friend. It doesn't bother me. I want you to feel open enough and safe enough to tell me that. At the same time, I don't always need to know that. If you feel like you need to share it with me, that's okay too. But I don't always need to know that you don't like um, when I, my hair is straight or you don't like the collar I wore that night or you don't like Tommy or you don't like it when I talk about Fred. I mean, Lily Garfield, thank you for loving my snatch. That is really sweet and kind. That is the kindest thing I've heard today. Um, hi, Yvonne. So I don't want to like drag this out. Um, thank you, Alana. T see, there you go. Tommy is fine. Not my favorite, but that's okay. I'm not going to tell you how to run your channel. It's my choice to watch or not. Still love you. She's a perfect example. I love Alana. I know her privately. I trust her and she's a friend. Did that just upset me what she said? No, because it was very adult. It was very mature and it doesn't bother me. I think people should be able to say, I don't like this. So I'm, therefore I'm going to do this. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't love it when I get a thousand of those a day, which I really don't anymore. But thank you, Kestrel. The thing is, I feel like I have a gertie here on me. The thing is, guys, we're over 20,000 people deep here. The supporters are coming out in droves. I have a huge army of you guys that are all my close personal friends. I don't really care that somebody is going to be like, I hate you. Okay. That doesn't, I mean, not to mention I've had decades of training to not feel feelings. So you've got that going against you too. I love you all the time, Reese. Doc, I love you back. Screw those haters. Doc, I love you. And I know you do. Doc loves me around the clock. And yes, I rhymed that on purpose. Um, <laughs> I don't even have 20,000 fans. Damn. Joe, yes, you do. Don't be lying. Don't be lying just because you're Desi. Um, and I'm not... <laughs> This is the thing about lip gloss. I don't like wearing lip gloss because every hair from the animals stick to it. Oh, thanks, Can't Spell Lou. Oh, I love you, Katie Fulton. I love you, Noelle, and I know you do. Um, I'm not talking about this to even put a lot of attention on it. I just knew you guys were all going to bring it up because I've gotten a lot of people saying, what happened to last night's live? It had to do more with the Fred comments. That kind of bothered me. And... Um, now that I just said it bothered me, um, we're going to flatten that, as you would say in Scientology. All of my trolls, haters, OSA, whoever you want to call it, are now going to go, okay, we know it gets her fired up. Let loose on it. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. You will still, um, I will still have something that you'll never have. And that's Fred. So, uh, Marion, thank you for the friendship tax. You're all covered for April, girl. We'll see you in May. Um, I'm not reading the chat right now because I'm kind of intent on what I'm trying to say. So please, I apologize if someone's trying to say something. I'm just kind of lightly looking and saying hi to people like Angela Keys. Um, 
haters yeah i wish haters weren't allowed here dawn but they are and the truth is haters help uh to increase the views on my channel and things like that so while i don't think about numbers and money that's their only purpose you know that's the only time i think about numbers and money is i think well at least somebody who hates me is helping boost my numbers i guess you know if you're gonna look at the bright side i love you kfic um yeah, that's right. Ursina. Exactly. Exactly. It's so weird. Odetta, I love you too. It's very split down the middle with me and Tommy. And guys, that's okay. Actually, when I was doing stuff with Sterling, which I do less of, um, I got a few of those emails that were like, I don't really like you with Sterling. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to stop doing that. And I'm not going to stop working with Tommy. You know, he's a very good, close friend of mine. He's helped me, whether you like him or not. The guy has been there for me quite a bit um, and he's very supportive. So, and I don't even have to explain that. You know, it doesn't matter because most of you love me enough to go, I just check out and I come back the next day or I catch on the replay on another, a different live or guys, it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. I'm not sitting here saying, if you don't like it, leave. I'm not saying that you guys are my friends and I love you. And I don't expect you to love every show that we do. I don't have those kinds of expectations. So, um, yeah, Kim is blue, but you know, people say like what Kim is blue just said, this is your channel. It is my channel, but this channel is different than like Natalie's or Aaron, where I just come on and report like, and talk about Scientology. The purpose of this channel is I come here to see you guys. Um, I come here because you're my friends and I want to interact with you and I want to talk about different subjects, whether they're heavy or light or funny. Um, yes, Gemini girl. That's the thing. Um, yeah, Jan, your husband passed away 24 years ago and I still talk about him and to him. That is a perfect example of what I was saying in the Zoom call today. Um, something I want to say about that, and I'm sorry that you lost your husband, by the way. I have a lot of widows in here. I know that because I talk with you all and um, I know JD. And I think it's a beautiful community to be able to talk about our spouses that passed away. And I will never stop talking about Fred. It's like a live journal for me and it helps me to keep him alive for me, but it's also something I know he appreciates. I feel like I have to sneeze, hold on. Ugh, it always, sorry, it always like starts to go away when I'm on a live, but it didn't that time. I just, I'm a firm believer that when you have um, a loved one that passed away, uh, thank you, Hef, whether it be a parent, a child, a spouse, a friend, a boss, I don't care, anybody that you cared about that you lost, why not keep them alive? Why not talk about them? You think they don't appreciate it if you believe in that kind of thing? I believe that people don't ever really go away. So Fred is somewhere, I feel him. I think he appreciates that I talk about and joke about and tell stories about that he told me or something like that. It keeps that memory going. I think there's energy attached to that. And I, I love that. I know you guys love Fred because two people reached out and said, don't talk about Fred. You think I'm going to stop talking about Fred? That's my point. I've got over 20,000 supporters here. There's what? A thousand or less, maybe. I mean, I don't get that many messages, but I'm guessing there's some percentage of them that follow me because they can't stand me. It's like they can't look away. It's a train wreck. I don't know. But I also don't think those people are subscribed. I think they just want to give their opinion on things. That's okay. I can handle it. Honestly, it doesn't even bother me that much. And I don't know if that's my Scientology training, but it's just very boring. It's like, okay, you don't like me because of this about my hair, or you didn't like how I styled that outfit, or you, you don't like that I've only been out a year, or you don't think I should be a part of SPTV because I don't talk about Scientology enough. But then if I talked about Scientology too much, you'd message me about that and say, you're boring because you talk, you know what I mean? It's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. just find another place to go. That's all. You hate this restaurant? Don't come back. You don't like the food? There's 500 more all down this block. So uh, I'm not complaining, guys. I'm not even upset about it. I just wanted to kind of get that out. You know me. 
verbalizing things helps me to process it and be done. <laughs> JD. Yeah, there's always going to be haters. Um, sorry, I'm looking at Bo. I wonder what he had in front of him. Yeah, some people are just never happy. And you guys, that's a reflection on them, not me. That's something I'm learning. You know, if somebody says something really harsh to you, whether it be somebody close to you or somebody that you've never met, that's a reflection on them. That's something going on on their side of the fence. You know, they are, remember what my therapist said? I'm going to cuss. They are working out their shit through you. That is such a cool way of looking at something. When somebody is uh, harsh to you, or they overreact to something or they snap or what have you, or, or, or they go through the whole range of emotions when it's like, whoa, I barely said anything. Think about that. They're working out their stuff through you. You just happen to be there. It's got nothing to do with you. You are just the target. You just happen to be there. You could be anybody. So just remember that. And then you don't react much to it. Like when someone does that, oh my God, I love you, Lara. When somebody does that, it's easier for me now when I think about it that way, instead of being like, whoa, what'd you just say? Or reacting right away. <laughs> Thank you, DNB. Um, that's how I look at it now. And it actually makes me feel a lot more empathy and I feel sorry for that person. I think, let me be your sounding board. Let me be your punching bag to a degree. I don't want to let somebody abuse me. But if somebody's really like going through it and they're just obviously unhinged about something, you know, it's not you. And I just think that in my mind now, I let that wash over me. And I think they're just working out something through me. They're just using me to work out whatever they have to work out. And if I can be the person to help them do that and they walk away, maybe feeling a little bit better about it, you know, hopefully it didn't bring me down enough to have a bad day. Bye, Alana. Yarn Prepper Wow Reset just made me think of my sister who passed. I know, I remember. She had a very bad life. Yarn Prepper, I'm still so sorry. I'm so sorry. But, you know, it's, I think it's, she'd be glad to know that you're talking about her. I think she'd be happy to know that we just brought her up and 515 people now are acknowledging that. You know, death is a terrible thing. It's awful. I hate that it's a part of life, whether it's an animal, because that's just as hard to lose a pet or your husband or your dad or your child, anything. It's hard. And we're coming up on the death date and that makes it hard for me. I think that's why I'm having bad dreams and I feel stressed. Um, but there's other ways to try to look at it. And everybody does grieve differently. And I just try to think about it like um, Fred would be happy that we talk about him. I know Fred very well. And I know that he would be glad to be a part of this conversation. And I'm sure that he is in some way. Oh, my God. Knit Pearl, your mom died last week. That's hard. I'm very sorry that you lost your mother. Sorry. You've never said anything that's made me like or respect you any less. What's important is you are a good person. P. Taylor, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Who in the world would be offended by Fred? I don't know. And I don't know that they were offended. I think it's, this person was trying to give me a, like a nice, friendly piece of advice. They even said, like, I love you to pieces, but you've got to quit talking about Fred so much. And I was like, first of all, I don't talk about him all the time. Um, we're coming up on his death date is all. And um, I also feel like when I do talk about him, um, I stay in the moment. I'm not like obsessing or getting weird about it. You know what I mean? Like, like I can't let him go or something weird. I mean, I, oh, Shelly, you lost your dog today. Oh man, Shelly. I'm so sorry. That makes me really sad for you, Shelly. I love you. Please tell your farmer husband that I'm sorry too. And I would call him by his name, but I don't know his name other than he's a farmer. 
I'm sorry, Shelly. That's horrible. That is so kind, Matrix Rabbit. You're honest about who you are and where you have been. Your show is different because of your heart. Thank you. Guys, this show is... Um, yeah, I agree, baby steps. Anniversary dates are can cause all sorts of, of trauma. Reese, you talk about whatever you want. The Fred issue was started as fair game tactics. I'm sure, Keela, but we can label it whatever we want. It still doesn't bother me. It bothered me enough to take the video down, yes. I think I got stressed out in that moment and took it down, but I've since proce processed it and moved on. I mean, you know, I'm not going to let it drag me down for hours and hours. It's just some people are unhappy, and um, there's that. But... Uh, Bo, you're being too loud, son. This channel is so much fun. I love this channel so much. I was thinking about it. Um, oh, Denise, I'm sorry. See, Denise lost her husband. Um, fancy Nancy, I'll tell you in just a second. This channel is so much fun because we don't stick to any topic or subject. I love that about this channel. It goes where it goes. You guys take it where it goes. Sometimes I come on with a specific topic. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Brian Lucas, you kill me. You mention him every time. <laughs> I love you, Brian. Her name was named, her, she was Reese. My husband's name is Terry. He built her an amazing coffin. We are both heartbroken. Thanks, Reese, and chat. Love you all. Your dog's name was Reese, and I didn't know that? Oh, Shelly. And he built her a coffin. I love your husband. Tell Terry I'm sorry. That's amazing, Mel. That's really sad. I love, Robin W., I love the random, too. Um... You know, JD, I was just thinking about that a couple hours ago that I would love to have Elizabeth on again. She's been busy, but I would really like to have her back. Um, and Brian, that would be you. That would be you. Guys, um, oh, Fancy Nancy. Fred died. Um, I'm not entirely sure why he died so soon after rehab. I know that he was recovering from a fall and it never really seemed to get better. And as you know, most of you know, when a, when a senior person, that's why I was always so weird about Fred and falling anybody, anybody in the senior living community, I was like, ah, like move, clear out the rugs, like whatever they have to do, because you could have someone who drives, works, whatever, and still does really well as a senior. One fall can take them down bad. And I always knew that with Fred and that's what happened. So he never really recovered from the fall is what I think happened. He did a lot of damage to his spine. And I think he just went downhill fast like they do. I've seen it happen so many times uh, where they're perfectly fine and then they have a fall and then they just, within a month or less, they can die. How did you handle going through all Fred's things? I'm finding it so difficult. Uh, it was very, very hard. And I still have things. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Joe. That's terrible. I'm sorry, Rain. Um, they, uh, I still have things that Mary that I can't let go of. There's many things, some of Fred's shirts that he wore all the time. Um, and his, his, uh, you know, members only, you know, the, all the old men wear those like tan khaki jackets. I will never get rid of that. Um, and then all of his things I still have. I have pictures. I have all kinds of memorabilia. I've got all kinds of stuff. I, I just won't get rid of it. I can't. I can't bring myself to do it. I'm not ready. And I think that's something that um, you do when you're ready. Nobody can tell you. And you shouldn't have anybody come over and help you do it. Do it when you're ready. Now, if you want someone to come help you, that's different. But don't do it until you're ready. You just don't have to. Um, yeah, it's about healing. I've shared with you a lot. I've been grieving the death of my old self for three years and your channel has helped me so much, especially when you talk about Fred. Brittany, I love you. You and I have become very close, Brittany. Thank you for saying that. Uh, we've been bawling all day. Well, for weeks, she had kidney disease only, oh, nine years old. Get your, yeah. If they catch it early, it can be managed. Oh my God, Shelly, that is young. B pickle. Yeah. Sharing about Fred helps me. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I love about this channel too, is 99.9% .9 of us, nobody judges anybody. And, and that's how it should be. And um, that's how it is for the most part. And then we get a few stragglers that are judgy or feel entitled to say something about why they don't like, you know, 
me saying this or having Tommy on, or, you know, I said something about Jeff they didn't like, and they just, can't, they just won't say subscribe to me anymore. Look, it's okay. It's totally okay to take a break from one another, to part ways. Um, do that for your mental health. Come back if you want to sometime or just don't. I'm not upset. I'm not being passive aggressive right now. It's just facts. It's, it's literally just business almost at this point. It's like, oh my God, it's like that line in um, Jerry Maguire. He's like, it's not show friends, it's show business. No, you guys are my friends to a degree. You're not my friend if you're reaching out to me going, I just don't like you and here's why. Totally okay. What has my mom been saying forever, guys? You know it. You know it well. What is it? Say it with me. My Italian mother. You're not going to be for everybody, Reese. My mom knew that I had probably a loud personality and I'm not going to be for everybody. Some people are more for everybody and they fit kind of in with everybody. Um, that's right, F. I'm not going to be that person, but I'm also not going to repel people like crazy. I don't want to hurt anybody. It's not for shock value. Um, you know what I mean? I'm here because this is just who I am. I'm learning more things about myself coming out of Scientology. That's what this channel is about not judging, healing, making it safe for everybody. We all can talk about our problems, our losses, things that we're grieving, things that we're afraid of. I love this about it. It's such a beautiful community because we can talk about our fears. We can talk about, you know, our regrets. I can sit here and cry to you guys about Fred or Scientology or the loss of my dad or the baby book. You know, I mean, there's just there's a lot to unpack. We all have a lot to unpack. And I love that we all do it. And nobody's sitting here going, Ugh, you know, except for those stupid few people. And I think we weeded them out last night because I lost about 40 subscribers last night. And um, that's right, Rain. I don't want to be for everyone. That's right. Um, I'm totally fine at this point. I feel safe enough. I feel like I've grown enough. I'm happy to lose you if you don't want to be here. I would prefer that you find a channel that you enjoy. You know, I don't get it because I don't even watch TV. But if I do watch TV, who's going to sit down and go, oh, I hate the show. Go ahead and start. Let's watch it. Who watches something they don't want? Like, don't can't you think of a show or a movie where you're like, I hated that movie and I never need to see it again. There's a few movies I think that I saw that I was like, I hated that movie. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Let's not watch it, okay? Oh, Shelly, I wouldn't care if I was the only person here. I always feel like you're talking to me anyway. I am talking to you guys. I talk to you all personally. This is, you guys are my heart. That's why I'm here. I think about you all day. I was out running errands today and Jeff was like, can we go do this or do you? And I was like, no, I was like, no, I gotta, I gotta get to my people. That's what I say. I'm like, I gotta get to my friends. I, 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 I start to get like nervous and panicky about it. And then I start freaking out thinking about all the different time zones. And I'm like, oh, what about Ursina? Cause she's across the pond. I'm like, what about Millie, the dandelion? What about all the, uh, Susan Miller? She's, she's in Portugal. Like I start thinking about, I'm like, and then I'm like Tampa B man. She's an hour ahead of me. I don't want to go. Like it starts to like unravel for me. And I'm like, I got to find the sweet spot. They started asking me to do earlier lives. You guys, I really am here because I love you. I love you guys. You mean everything to me. Lisa Tremble. Oh my God. I'm so glad you made it. Um, fancy Nancy, does Jeff watch your show? Um, I think sometimes he pops in, but not really, not anymore. Mm -mm. No. Robin W. I loved chatting with you today. You are so cute. Yeah. I got to get home and get started for sister Christian. She's our biggest supporter guys. <laughs> Susan Miller, she's in Portugal and I'm still awake. See, I actually think about all of you. Yeah, the viruses. I'm like, I got to work around the viruses grocery store and uh, go on to, uh, where do you guys go? Don't you guys go antique shopping all the time or you're at the grocery store or the dentist? The, you guys, I got to work around the, the viruses schedule. Joe's always flying around to DJ. I got to work through that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sister Christian. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I, I really love you guys. This is my life now. I hope to make this into a career. I hope we can really grow it. I want, 
20,000 more people, as long as they're just like us. I mean, it's not about the numbers for me, but think how many, I mean, I just love talking to you guys. The more the merrier, if, if they're cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Doctors, dentists, and antique shopping. Well, you guys go to the store a lot too. Um, yeah. Groceries. My fiance was killed by a drunk driver in 1981. I still have belongings of his and think of him every day. Time does heal, but yes, he will always be with me. That is beautiful. Karen Hall. I, I couldn't have thought of that better. I'm sorry that you lost him, but you're right. He'll always be with you. It'll never go away. And you'll always talk about him. It doesn't matter how much time passes. I love that he'll be with you though. I love this Sharona. You're happy to be here. I've been replay crew for way too long. It fills my heart to see you taking up for yourself this way. Your growing strength is so inspiring. Thank you. Sharona, I'm glad that you made it girl. And thank you for saying that. I'm little by little. I mean, I still am easy to, I'm sensitive guys. Plus Joe, you were wrong. Wait, is tomorrow Monday? Joe Virus, you said Shark Week's going to start tomorrow. It's not. It's going to start Thursday, but I'm starting to already feel feelings. Lots of feelings. Brian Lucas doesn't have a schedule <laughs> unless I'm tired. And yeah, I was just going to say, unless you're doing yard work, Brian. I love that Brian goes live with me whenever, whenever I go live. Archie's mom, how is it even possible to not like hearing about Fred? His grace and kindness radiates through the lens. Don't ever stop talking about him. Those losers have no idea what they are missing. That is so nice. Yes. Don't worry. I won't. Hey, hey, Paula, do you think your father knows about your success on YouTube? No, I doubt it. I mean, maybe somebody told him months ago, but he hates me. He would never watch it. And if someone tried to talk about me, he would say, I don't want to hear about that. Oh my God, Gretchen only. Of course you do. My dentist. Kennedy, welcome. <clears throat> Noble Savage. I hate that someone bullied you to take, I can't always catch you live and often get the replay. You know, it's okay. We're going to move on from it, but I appreciate you supporting that Noble Savage. I just, uh, it was my choice. It's not the other person's. It's not there because it's more than one person. It's not their fault. It's my fault. I took it down. I mean, no one forced my hand to do that. So keep that in mind. And you know, what's beautiful. We'll keep making more content. So Tune in. Uh, Moni69, thank you. That is so sweet, babe. Marie Marion, because of you, Reese, I get to spend a few hours a day with you and everyone in the chat. This helps a lot because I'm pretty much alone most of the time. So thank you, Reese and chat. Marie, I love, love to hear that. Um, yeah, Ev Barney, he is. I was just saying that today. So I was with Jeff today. Um, we went to brunch, which was really nice. And then I went to the Apple store in Sephora. Don't let me forget to show you guys what I got. And I was just thinking that. And uh, Jordy T, you live in... Hi. Hello, Punky. Hi, Chauncey. Oh, you're needy. And I can tell. You've been kind of mopey. I'm sorry. It makes me sad. How come you're kind of sad? Um, hey, Caroline, in the moment. So I was telling Jeff we were driving and I said... I love my channel so much. Like I love how much I have helped and you have helped. And you know, what's so cool. I told him, you know what my favorite thing is? Somebody pointed this out in the zoom call we did today. You know what the coolest thing about this channel to me? I mean, there's, it's not the coolest, but it's in the top three. You guys have made friends with other people on this channel, like actual friends. People have connected up and have become true friends. People who were lonely, people who were widows, people who have lost children. Um, I, can't, I can't explain how amazing that makes me feel. People have uh, started, you know, I'm not gonna name names here, but I've heard that there have been little love interests and matchmaking, and I can't tell you, I'm gonna start crying. It makes me so happy. I love it so much. Um, Ev Barney, I'm going to start your question because I'll answer it in a minute. Corey, thank you for becoming a new member. I love it so much. Jimena, I love that I got to meet you face to face today. You guys, the, it's like what Tommy says. I can't think of a better word. Connection. Some of us really, really need connection. Some of us don't. 
some of us have tons of connections and you're still best friends with all your friends from grade school and you guys go on girls trips and tour buses and the red hat ladies, fine. But some of us need connection and have found it through all of us on this channel. And I just, I can't think of anything. Yeah, half, I know. I can't think of anything that makes me happier. And, and guys coming from me, that's saying a lot because nothing, this was me in Scientology, monotone. I had no life in me. Nothing got me excited. Nothing excited me. You couldn't even say, hey, you want me to take you on a trip here? I'd be like, <sighs> nothing. You know why? Because I didn't have friendships. I didn't ever have connections with people. Never. I didn't know what that was like. And now that I have that, and I have not only friendships and connections with you guys, you all are connecting with people. It's just spinning off into this amazing little, what do you call that? Ecosystem. I feel like we have our own little ecosystem where we have our own little city and we're just thriving and it's so cool. And when I think about feeling sad, I just think, I mean, I wake up every day. You guys, you guys own me. Okay. You own me in a good way. I love you guys so much. I wake up every day. Yes. You were dead inside. And now you're blooming. Shelly, you always have the perfect words. I wake up every day, like so excited. I'm like, when am I going to go live today? What am I going to talk about? I think about it all day long now. I almost feel like, um, not that I know what a writer is like, but like, for instance, Jeff is a software designer. He writes code and he said, it's like being a writer. Like he will actually get writer's block and like, he can't, you know, and so that what, that's what it makes me think of. Like, I wake up every day now thinking like, what am I going to write? What am I going to say? What's the story going to be today? What am I going to title it? What's the inspiration today? And some days come better than others. Some days I'm like, oh, I got it. I'm going to talk about this. And some days I'm like, I'm so depressed and I want to talk about this. It just varies. But I love that you're here for me, that I'm here for you. We show up every day. And there's people who are lonely and sit around waiting for it. I love to be there for you. Am I taking this too far? Am I like overdrawing this out? I'm just, it's just so important to me. I love this because uh, I started to watch you. I have been wearing makeup again. I had the courage to go into Sephora. I was put down for wanting to wear makeup. So thank you. I love that. I love that. You're an acquired taste, Reese. So those who don't like it, they can just kiss your tushy. Well, I love that too. And your little boyfriend too. Don't forget about him, F, because he's still around and he's cuter than ever. Yes, Skyrider. This is the whole enchilada, enchilada. Only what is real. That's why I love this channel and chat. Me too. At least you're not fake, Reese. Well, we know that's the truth. You did, mayonnaise. You saw a Sephora bag. Katie, exactly. I do. Sarah Browett, I just, it'll never get old for me seeing people's connections. And it just means everything. Robin Miners, it is. This community is like hot cocoa. Janie Hansen, I love you. Seriously, your lives make me feel like how Gertie feels in your lap. Hope that didn't sound weirder than it meant. No, look at her. That makes you feel that way? Then that's amazing, Janie. And we love you. I mean, I'm glad that you guys get it. And I'm not just like harping at this point, but um, K-Wax, I appreciate that, Reese. I'm pretty much a loner as I've gotten older. Haven't made friends in years. So I enjoy watching your channel. Exactly. Like it just breathes life into us in some way. And what's really cool is everybody takes it differently. Everybody interprets, or interprets it in a different way. Some people say, because of this channel, I now dress up a little more. I now I wear, wear makeup a little more. Some people are like, now I've made all these friends. Some people are like, I was a widow and I resonate with that. I mean, I love how everybody has a different attachment. It's, 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 sometimes I think I'm like, is it just me? Because I just came out of from under a rock. I came out of the darkness and I'm just seeing light. I mean, I don't know, but it's just 
when I think about it. Thank you, Debbie Logan. I love you, JD. And I'm so glad that you were able to make it today. Jimena, I don't feel lonely anymore. That saves people. You guys, people think about the worst thoughts in the world. Loneliness can cause some of the worst thoughts and you know what they are. You know what I mean? Her to, for her to say, I don't feel lonely anymore is earth shattering to me. It, it's unbelievable. Kim Greenleaf, I'm pretty much housebound due to oxygen use. And this is the only contact that I have with others. It's wonderful. Is that not the most astonishing thing? Kim Greenleaf, thank you for sharing that. And I'm so glad that you're here. Because of this channel, I am seen, heard, and loved. Blake Reed, that is a fact. You are very seen, heard, and loved. We love you so much, Blake. My sister, George, I've watched you since the beginning and I just connected with you right away. I don't have real friends either, but I look forward to you every day. I love that. I love that. Who, what, where now? I love you, girl. You are so cute, by the way. I loved chatting with you this morning. Thank you for that. You are so fun to talk to and adorable. And I love your dogs. I would love to meet people and make friends now due to you. Thank you so much, Michelle. I love when I see you on here. Thank you for saying that. I love Auntie Wombat. I'm one, I'm one of those kind of lonely people here. I have a great hubby, but he's gone long hours. I'm home alone a lot and look forward to this group to feel less lonely because you are. I love that. Franklin MC, welcome. It's a safe place for us to land. I agree, JD. And I feel the same. I think that's why we all love it. We all feel the same. It's the same sense of purpose. It's just we all connect in a different way. I'm less lonely, still lonely. Kestrel, it didn't help that I threw you under the bus, though. So. I love you, Kestrel. I just love this. You guys, it means so much to me. Yeah, Matrix Rabbit, you are definitely seen here. It means so much because I didn't get to experience this kind of feeling ever in Scientology, which was my entire life. So now I just wake up every day with like some sense of like, I just... I'm like, it's hard for me to be upset. It's hard for me to feel anything but, but gratitude every day. I have friends for the first time. I just feel so excited to get down here into this office, to jump onto this computer and see you guys. When I see 500 people in here, I'm like, God, that just fills me up. It's incredible. I love so many people that I have met through you, Reese. I will always be grateful. You mean so much to me and Uncle Dave. You make him feel loved. I love Uncle Dave. I was so happy when I saw him pop in and say hi. He's so cute. He was so friendly. What a great person. Thank you, Kat. I love you. P. Taylor, thank you for your super sticker. <laughs> I've quit watching TV since you and Tommy and other YouTube creators. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Oh, you're definitely seen on the lifeboat. I mean, I don't know whether other channels, but definitely there. Yes, Blake, we really love you. Riley's human. It's not just you. Everyone got so distant through the pandemic and texting. I have new friends I look forward to visiting with. Thank you. Yes, I love that. Donna, you should order it because I think she's not getting any more and it's on sale, isn't it? Yes, I see you, baby. I know. Hey, Awakened by the Looking Glass. No, Relatable Reese, what you are doing is special. The people that we have all met, the friends, the people we are allowed to be without prejudice, that is incredible. I agree 100%. And I know you're over on the boat all the time, and I feel the exact same way there. I used to feel more nervous on Tommy's channel. I don't think his people, which most of them are over here too, but guys, some of them are not. And I don't think a lot of them have fully warmed up to me, but most of them have. It was, it was prickly in the beginning. I don't feel, I did not feel welcome on his channel, but again, that's not necessarily their fault. That's more me. I'm kind of loud and I'm not for everybody. And I think Tommy's more chill when he does his show. And so when I come on, I'm like, and animated. I've tried to tone that down. I always say that like some, some of you will come over to his channel and you're like, are you okay, Reese? And I'm just kind of like, I'm trying to just mind my manners in his house because I don't want to upset people with my loud ass personality. 
That's right, Joe Virus. Nobody gets mad at you for using humor to deal with these serious topics. I love it when you pop in with humor. Thank you, Sharon T. Yes, Donna, you're going to be an empty nester soon. And I don't have a partner. I'm so glad I have you in your channel. I love that. And we're here for you. Simon Superstar. Hi, Reese. I'm glad you caught a live too, babe. Thank you for your super chat. Katie says, honestly, this channel, channel has kept me going during this chapter of my life. And I love all you all for it, especially you, Reese. Oh my God. I love you so much, Katie. Do you want to go see? Is your brother home? Thank you for saying that, Katie. We love you so much. You're a huge part of this family. Moni69, this is a happy place. I love you, girl. Thank you. Ruthie, you know I live alone with my parrot. You make my day. I'm so glad you guys watch me, Ruthie. Yeah, if you talk about something I don't care about, I leave. Simple. You'll never please everyone, do you? I love that. I love you, Sarah Browett. Thank you. Oh my God, how are you? Lisa, I missed a lot this week. Still, you're still in the hospital, but I think they think I'm finally starting to improve. Miss you. Lisa, did you end up having pneumonia? I'm so glad that you're in the hospital. You need to be where it's there. It sounds like they're taking good care of you. I'm. Thank you for checking in. I've been thinking about you. I'm glad you're okay. Debbie Logan, that's not true. You just have to style for your body type. That's all. It's all about, to me, colors and like how comfortable are you with accessories you know some women don't like to wear a lot of jewelry I hear that all the time women are like I don't like to wear a lot of jewelry so it's just it's different for everybody style is such a fun thing because it's whatever you want it to be I would love that if you could come on the cruise Jimena but if you can't there will be more there she is loneliness and isolation are two contributing factors to my sister's death oh my god that's sad I'm acutely aware of how painful loneliness can be. Chayanne's my 100%. I'm sorry you lost your sister, but that is very true. You make a good point. Uh, Iwa, it was well over 130. <laughs> the love boat, Shelly. I know, Gertie is hilarious. Donna, they don't have your size. I don't know what size you need, but it's a very just um, kind of a one size type thing. If we're thinking of the same thing, it's just like a kimono. It's just like an open thing. There is a smudge on these and it's driving me. Well, maybe there isn't. Oh, no, there is. Thank you, Jam Jam. Joanne Palmer, you make me not afraid to step out of my comfort zone and chat or post something on the Facebook group and everyone is so awesome. I love that, Joanne Palmer. That means a lot, doesn't it? Angela Keys, that's so sweet. Shauna B, I'm a caregiver forever. My 89 year old mother, I have a place to come when I'm feeling forgotten. Shauna B, that is so special. And thank you for taking care of her. It means so much, you know that. Thank you for your super chat. Hey, wine a little bit more. I look for you every day. My day feels weird if I don't get to talk to you every day. I love that. Zelda, I love, uh, number one reason I love your race is you love animals as much as I do. Says a lot about a person. Zelda, I love animals so much. And you know that. Yeah, Shelly, you haven't ever. Oh, you do have pneumonia in both lungs. I don't half ass anything. Okay, Lisa, girl, just stay in the hospital. That's where you need to be. I mean, pneumonia is nothing to mess with. I told you this the last time we talked. I'm just glad you're there. And thank you for checking in with us. We are all thinking about you. You're a huge part of this channel. Peace 24, I love that. When I'm cracking up while listening, even uh, my family gets a kick out of that. I'm knowing laughing and happy. Thank you, Natalie Swanson. Miss Wallflower, because of you, I have someone to laugh and or cry with every day. You are helping me to heal and always feel connected to amazing people. That's so special. Oh my God, that means so much. Does Gertie have a birthday? I just call her birthday the day I adopted her, which was October 1st, 2016. I've had her for a long time. I was thinking about that this morning. It made me sad because she's old, older at this point. Um, I think she was two when I got her. 
So she's getting up there. So I just call that her birthday. I love jewelry. I love bright colors. I love funky, but I feel like people are staring at me. They're not. You know why they're staring? Because it's your own cool style. That's what I like about when I style something. It's I just got my own inspiration in my head for it. Um, and let them stare. You know, it's fun. It's fun to wear bright colors. I know, Ewa. He was wrong. Um, and guys, I called this, I wanted to say, because we did kind of cover last night and why I took it away, took it down. That's why I called this salt and sugar look the same because I kind of had to remind myself today. I was saying this in the Zoom meeting this morning. I assume everybody here is supportive. Everybody here wants to support us, wants to be a part of the group. And I kind of forget, which is a good thing. Honestly, it's naive as hell, but I kind of forget that not everybody is here to support us. Not everybody is on our side. And that's their problem, not our problem. I'm going to still treat everybody like you are watching. There's 510 of you right now. I'm still going to treat you as if you are here for that reason. And I have to remind myself, though, that you're not. There are some people who don't have our best interest at heart. And that's, again, their problem. I mean, that's not something I want to waste a lot of energy on. And I don't want to give a lot of power to because we're doing a lot of work healing and making progress, all of us. So we don't want to give a lot of energy or power to your, to, to your healing, to steps to healing. You know what I mean? So salt and sugar look the same. And I need to remind myself of that. Auntie Wombat, put this toward hugs. Oh my God. Good. Cause I want to go get them. Thank you. It's my way of saying thank you for giving us a place to feel like we belong. I treasure you more than you can imagine. I love you, Auntie Wombat. I feel that from you. Thank you for the $20. And I will put that toward his shoes. He really wants them. Huxley is so cute, by the way, you guys. He went to a Royals game. And you remember how excited he is about... Um... Hey, witness, that's okay. How excited he is about baseball. And he was so excited to go to the game. Um, thank you, Baby Steps. And I thought this was so cute. I took his picture today. Look how cute he is. That was him before he went to the game. Isn't he cute? Got his little Royals gear on. How adorable is that? He's such a cute kid. He is so cute. I got to go get him some nice clothes for that dance. And I went this weekend with him somewhere, like a department store. And we didn't get anything because they were ridiculously expensive. So I think I'm going to go to like a thrift store. I mean, I may go to like a TJ Maxx, but um, the store we went to, the dude was trying to sell us like $200 Ralph Lauren pants. And I was like, dude, he's never going to wear these again. And it's just for a dance. Like, I don't want to overboard it. That's insane. But the guy said his waist is probably 28. He's a size 28. He was like, those are not even easy to find. Um, he's not super skinny. He just works out and he's like really shaping his body and he's pretty cut. I'm really proud of Huxley. I know. Didn't he look cute? I thought he looked so cute. I know Katie Huxley is so obsessed with ba baseball all of a sudden. And I love that. He's like, so, um, he doesn't know. I don't want to rent CM a suit or a tux because I don't want to overdo it. So I went to a thrift store yesterday and I found two really nice polo shirts for him. They were $6 a piece. I got a gray one and a black one. And I thought these are perfect. If we go to like a nicer restaurant, great. You can throw that on. And I got it at a thrift store but I don't want to rent a tux or a suit because I don't want him to be overdressed. I think he'll be embarrassed. So I really kind of want to just get him like a pair of black chino type pants or like a pair of khakis. I don't want to get him like that nice in case no one else dresses that nice. I don't want him to feel weird. Um, I know he's so cute. Yeah. TJ Maxx has really good stuff. I'm going to go to TJ's. Um, are you sure? I'm usually a lurker. Or on the replay crew. So we haven't had much direct interaction, but I have felt drawn to you from day one because of how real you are. So open and honest. Thank you. Oh, that is so nice. Thank you for taking the time to say that. That is really kind. Thank you. And I, I appreciate you being on the replay crew. Thank you, my friend. Um, I'll keep your Reese in my heart, keeping the memory alive. You know, yes, Shelly, totally. I know, poor Shelly. Uh, he did ask the girl to the dance. She already had a date. That's okay, though. He wasn't upset. Love you always. Kathy loves horses. You too. Right back at you, girl. 
Thank you for your super chat. He's going to look really cute. Yeah, I just, I kind of want to get him like a nicer little pair of shoes. But again, I'd like to go to a thrift store for that. It's just stupid to go buy. I've always thrift short. I mean, when Huxley was a baby, you guys, when he was a toddler, I would find the nicest clothes because why? They wear those outfits once and then they outgrow them. They grow so fast. So I would go to thrift stores all the time when he was little and I would get the cutest little like outfits from the Gap and like, just super. I don't know. I don't think I ever once bought a full price outfit for him. Maybe ever. I just, he, one, he was growing like a weed, but two, it was so easy to just get, I mean, thrift stores are the best for that stuff for baby clothes. Yeah. Katie, he did. Thank you, Debbie Logan. Yeah. I thought about going to target goosebump target is where you bought your son's black pants for band concerts. I was thinking that too. Um, I thought I would hit a thrift store. If I don't find them at a thrift store, I would just go to Target or, or TJ's, one or the other. Jimena, that's so cute. Yeah, I love thrift store shopping. And you know what's cool about that? Huxley does too, because he loves to go look for sports stuff and shoes. And um, he's always picking out like sports equipment at the thrift store. Yeah, a tux is a little bit too much, I think. Too much of a, too much for Hux, a tux. Auntie Wombat, see if you can get Huxley to ask a girl to the dance who probably doesn't get much attention. Yes, he could absolutely change her life. Yes, I love that idea, and I will. And I want to have him on again this week. He loves coming to chat with you guys. Well, hi, Jeffrey. Yes, you do what? What do you mean, yes, I do? What are you coming in saying that for? Um, oh, my God, you're always on the replay. Geoplanet Jane, I love seeing you. Hey, babe. Katie says, hi, Jeff. That's right. They do have cute stuff. Lizard, the Goodfellow brand at Target. They have some cute stuff. Yeah, I love Shelly. You and I would thrift store shop all the time. I know we would. Oh, he watches my lives. Yeah, he does sometimes. Jeff is mainly. Um, oh, interesting. Jeff mainly doesn't, though. Look at that. Reese, I saw your parents, Jean and Kathy Wally. Well, that was his wife that died. His new wife is Gisela on the Chicago. I oh, yeah, because when he married his wife, Kathy, she was Chicago public. That makes sense. Yeah, Joe Virus. I, EY, I love you too. Joe Virus, it would be so fun to thrift store shop. Jeanette Brown, welcome. Yeah, add thrift stores to your scheduling conflicts. Joe, I wish that I lived with you guys because we would thrift. Yeah, you guys do it way more than antique shopping. Rain, I bet we would have such a fun time. Kate Ann, slowly engaging more since this has felt like a safe enough space. Well, it is, girl, and I love that. I love your channel. It's supportive as I go through my own healing journey. Seeing you reflect, heal, and grow inspires me. Kate Ann, thank you for saying that, and thank you for feeling... Like you could come out and say it, girl. You're welcome here anytime. And you want to lurk, you can lurk. But definitely know that you can come out and chat and we will engage with you and interact. And I love that. Uh, my something, Maj. Reese, uh, your love may be too strong for someone who is not ready yet, but someday they might need you and they will find you. If you say my name, I will laugh. I tried to say your name, but thank you for saying that. Mara, that is so kind. Thank you for your super sticker, babe. Okay, Goosebump, I get it. Jeanette, and thrift store shopping takes up a lot of time. Um, oh, I know, Shelly. That's totally it. Joy of Cats. I love Joy of Cats. Um, you have to have a lot of time for thrift stores. That's the only thing. Unless you know specifically what you're looking for. I like to hit thrift stores and find, I found the, yesterday at a thrift store, I found the cutest vintage button down top I bought. So like I'll go sifting through looking real fast for vintage. I love to go to thrift stores to look for belts. Um, that's a really good place to find fun vintage belts. Um, if you need any, like I needed a new makeup bag because mine fell apart for when I traveled. They're like 40 bucks at Target. I went to a thrift store and they had a whole bin of just like donated little tiny zipper bags and they were all a buck a piece. I bought a bunch of them and I was like, yes, like I'm so glad I didn't go uh, buy 
one that was ridiculously priced. Take Huxley to Brooks Brothers or Nordstrom's for a good blue blazer, a good shirt and great tie and chinos would be good to wear with. I would do that yesterday, Geo Planet Jane. We went to Von Mar and I love Von Mar, but um, he won't wear those pants again. And they were like $188. And I didn't, that's stupid to me. I mean, it's just not something, but I'm with you, Geo Planet Jane. I would love for him to have a good blazer. Um, and Nordy's is definitely a good place to go get that. I just sometimes can find that stuff at a thrift store and as little as he's going to wear it, it's not worth it. Now I have, I have invested, I, I bought one time a really nice Ralph Lauren blazer and matching pants to it. And it was incredibly expensive. I bought it like probably 10 years ago. I still wear it all the time. So it, you know, and it's Ralph Lauren and it's just beautiful and it always will stay classic. So I get what you're going, where you're going with that geo planet, Jane, but I'm a blazer girl, a hundred percent. When I had my corporate job, I probably have 25 blazers. I love blazers and they never go out of style. They're classic as hell. Yes. Katie belts are expensive and you can often find, and as skinny as you are, it'll be easier for you. Sometimes I have a hard time, but I love finding vintage belts. They are so much fun, Katie. Yeah. Cave mom. Totally. Jeanette, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's my thing too, Joe, is he's still growing. Do not get him any boys or men stuff at cheesy place if there's a good one at a thrift. Yes, and he can't wear boys. He's definitely a men's size at this point, but don't worry. I have a good sense of style, Geo Planet Jane. I'm not going to get him anything that's, you know, dumpy looking. Um, I'm pretty weird about, actually, I'm even weird. Like when I met Jeff, I was like, oh yeah, we're going to have to fix this up a little bit. I'm kind of funny about polishing up a man. I think a man should look somewhat polished. Look, Huxley wears sweatpants every day, but for some reason he pulls it off and like does it in a good way. Um, sweatpants can be really, I wear sweatpants all the time, but I jazz them up. I accessorize it. Like, I don't know. I just think even if you're a t-shirt and jeans kind of person or a sweatpants person, you can, you can doctor it up a little bit. So I just feel like don't worry, Geo Planet Jane. I got this under control, I swear. Hey, Shelly Kelly. Your brunch outfit was adorable this weekend with Hux. Oh, yeah. Peace 24. Thank you. That was so that's a good example. I found that where you guys remember. I got the top at Lady Co. the other day, but I got this. Um, this was a vintage skirt. And then I got the boots a long time ago with the hat and a little wrap. That was cute. We went to brunch yesterday, Huxley and I. But And then that's a vintage belt. Katie, pay attention to that. That's a vintage belt, Katie, with some kind of um, weird bone or something in the middle of it. I don't know what that, that stone is, but it's cool. Thank you, Janet. Yes, original Anne, 100%. That would be too, GeoPlanet Jane. Would love a Reese makeover. <laughs> I love styling things. You wore blazers at nightclubs in the 90s. I love that, Joe. Where did you get your fashion sense? Magazines? How do you know so much? Well, thank you for saying that. I don't feel like I know a lot. It's just a weird, natural thing for me. I. It's almost like a puzzle. I don't know how I, like, it's almost like playing an instrument or something, how it comes naturally for people. I just... I can look into a closet and I'm like, Ooh, I should try that with that. Ooh, we should, we should mix those two pieces together and then add a pop of red for that to make, create an effect. And then, um, do that, that frame instead of the other frame. And then let's do a pointed toe with that, or let's do a, you know, a little heel. I don't know. It's just weird. It's, it's, I look at an outfit and I'm like, it's missing this. Let's get rid of this. That makes it too busy. Those colors kind of fight each other. Let's jazz it down. It's weird, but I love doing that. And it's just something I can, I just feel like I Tetris things. I'm like, Ooh, that fits. Nope. That doesn't fit. Put that away, but let's do a pop of that color. It's weird, but I love doing it. It's my favorite thing. If I could have made a career out of that, I would have, I always said it'd be fun to like be some kind of a personal shopper or style somebody's closet. I love making people feel more confident too in what they're wearing. And it's all about your body type. Like you like my style. It may not be good for your, your body type. I have to dress according to my, like I purposely wore that because of my body type. I'm very long bodied. Um, and 
And so I had to break it up with the belt. It wouldn't have been as cute without the belt. I tried and I was like, oh, this looks frumpy. But adding the belt pulled it together, gave me a waist, gave me more shape. It's weird. Okay, mom, I would love to try being a stylist. Thank you, Sandy Wanny. That's, I agree. It's an art. It's fashion to me is very much, it's very personal. I don't like trendy fashion. I don't like people who, I'm going to offend some people here, but I don't like things that are like you see everywhere. I've always said this. If I was a millionaire, you wouldn't see me carrying a Louis Vuitton bag with the L's and the V's and the brown, you know, it's too plain for me. Everybody has one. To me, that's not fashion. That's status. That's a status symbol. You want me to know that you have money. You want me to know that pretty much that's it. It doesn't show me that you have any kind of style. That's my opinion. That's not nice. And I apologize if you have one. If I was gifted one, I'd wear it. I'd use it. But they're thousands of dollars. And I would rather have something that doesn't have a label splashed all over it because I don't really want to promote your brand like that for no reason. It's just boring to me. And to me, fashion is more than that. It's an art. Like I wanted a pop of red. So I did a pop of red here and a pop of red here and a pop of red here and here. And so I would rather do something like that than be like, oh, get me a status symbol. Go get me something that says Gucci. Now, don't get me wrong. I've always wanted a Gucci bag, a vintage Gucci bag, but I love the colors. So I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> Hux. Oh, it's Bo eating the cat food. Hold on, I'm going to yell. Watch, he just picked up a baby and he's going to bring it over here to show me. He's like, look at this cool baby. I'm going to show it to you to distract you from what I was just doing. When he gets in trouble, that's what he does. Look, he's like, look at this cool little stuffed animal I found. Look at that. I know the golden goose. I love the golden goose because of the colors and they're handmade and they're small batch. That's my only high end problem. And I buy them used and counterfeit most likely. Wow, look at that. Look at Bo trying to distract me by by showing me something that was Gertie's that he stole out of her bed. He's like, let me show you this because I was eating all the cat's food. Bo, you seem to be having a lot of problems and you're not really making the right life choices lately. And it makes me want to be really mad at you. Because sometimes you're a bit of a prob and sometimes you get into a lot of trub and we don't like it and nobody likes it. And there's 517 people here who agree with me. Smile, you're a real poo-poo face. Anyway, anything else, guys? Bridget, leggings can be really cute. If you go over there again, Bo, I swear to God, I'll paint your back door red, boy. I heard that in a movie once, and I've used it on Huxley ever since, and every time he goes, good boy, lay down. It's just Bo expressing himself by eating all the cat's expensive food. That's cool. He did stop tooting. Yeah, Joe Virus, we are judging him. He stopped, he stopped farting. Um, oh, the Sephora purchase. Nice, Anna Banana, thank you. Um, I removed all the food from the countertops so that Bo, um, I want it, Barbara, I want it. Um, I removed all of it from the countertop so that Bo couldn't get into any more food. So I came home and I had five tampons that I had on the counter that I was going to put in my bathroom and he picked them all up and shredded them. He was like, take that bitch. You put those bagels away. You put them in the pantry and I'm going to eat your tampons. And that's what he did. And I was like, touche. Um, okay. I want to talk real quick about this. I'm going to watch the chat go down real fast. Cause I want to talk about this Sephora purchase. Yeah, pay that much for kids' shoes. I just go, again, I'm going to go check the thrift stores. Did you dress to coordinate with the Sephora bag? No, I didn't, but that did kind of turn out nicely, didn't it? Um, okay, I need to know something, guys. I have a problem. I, I realize I have a problem, so don't rub it in. Yeah, um, so, okay, lots of people are asking me about this. 
you saw on Natalie's channel, kids getting, getting out of a van and going into the Kansas City org. What is the story? Jimena, thank you so much. I miss Sterling so much also, Blake. Jimena, thank you though. Um, Bo didn't crap out those bagels at all. He just farted a bunch of really smelly air. So um, I never I never addressed this because it just, I don't think about it. My brother-in-law drove that van. That van was full of children because there is a, um, yes, I'd love to give advice about makeup, Moni69. If you have any questions, I'd love to help you with that. Thank you, Zelda. So there is a Scientology school here in the Kansas City area, and it is in Dan O'Connor's basement of his house. And that sounds creepy, but it isn't. Dan O'Connor lives in like a $3 million mansion um, in a very, very, very nice home. And um, that's where the school is located. And so I know this because I was going to put Huxley in that school. It's $1,000 a month per kid. And his nanny, his nanny, who I think is like 16 or 17, is the teacher. Before that, it was my brother-in-law, Sam. Sam Argus was the teacher and he drove the bus. He quit because he got a better paying job and he hated driving that bus all the way from their house to the org. From the school to the org, it's like an hour. It's far. Um, yeah, it's very serial killer. Cave mom, ma'am, thank you for being a new member, babe. So the bus uh, of kids are being bused from school. They get out of school. And then they are bused to the Church of Scientology, Kansas City, to go on course until their parents get off work at 10 o'clock at night. So they get up and they go to school. Um, I can't remember what time the school starts. I want to say it was eight, eight in the morning. So they get up, they go to school, and then they're bused from uh, in the afternoon to go on course at the church. I know this for a fact because one, my brother-in-law was the teacher and the driver, but two, I was going to put Huxley in there. I couldn't afford a thousand dollars a month, but guess who could? Doug and Brenda, my in-laws, and they were pushing me very, very hard to pull Huxley out of his public school. He's always gone to and put him in that school. And I was really weighing on that. I was really weighing on doing that, but something in my mind, something in my gut kept saying, I don't really want to do that. It will, it will unsocialize my kid. My kid had always gone to public school. So I was like, there was only like 10 kids that went to that school and they're all different ages. Um, they don't get to be kids. No. So that's whatever you saw on Natalie's channel. That's the bus that goes from Dan O'Connor's house to the school every day. And they go on course till 10 o'clock at night and their parents come pick them up. And that's all they do. Scientology all day long. Um, is that school just for public or also Sea Org kids? Um, both. Yeah, it's for anybody who wants to pay $1,000 a month. They'll take your money. It doesn't really matter. They even went so far as to tell me, because I went to like, I went to one of the school fundraisers. I went to all these like weird things where Dan was trying to recruit kids in for the school. I kind of had to be sold on it. And Dan was like, this is not a Scientology school in any way. He was like, all people are welcome from all denominations. And we don't teach L. Ron Hubbard stuff. And I was like, you realize you're talking to someone who's been in as long as you. Like, you're not selling me any of this bullshit. Um, but I got this close to pulling Huxley out of school. It was hard, hard sell hardcore recruiting to get those kids in. As a matter of fact, I believe in the Kansas City area, all the public Scientologists, all those kids, all the kids of, of Scientologists go to that school except Huxley. Huxley was the only one that I wouldn't, um, Dan O'Connor is the facts thrower. He's the facts man, yes. Um, do they learn anything in that school? I mean, it's all Scientology. Um, it's called Applied Scholastics and it's all the works of L. Ron Hubbard. Um, yeah, thousand bucks a month. And I, again, I got very, very close to pulling Huxley out and putting him in there because I was getting high pressure, high, 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 high pressure, you guys, to put him in there. Um, because I kept saying I can't afford it. There was no way I was going to be able to afford a thousand dollars a month. And of course, my in-laws swooped in and they were like, no worries, we'll pay for it. And I would say, my other thing was, thank you, a running bet for becoming a member. 
The other thing was, and Mimi's love. Thank you. That is so nice, guys. Thank you. Then I gave the excuse. I was like, well, I can't drive him. I have a full-time job, which I did. So I was like, I can't, I can't afford a thousand dollars a month and then leave work and go pick him up. And they were like, we've got that covered. A van is going to take him from Dan's house to the org where he will then go on course all afternoon. And you come get him at nine 30 at night when course is over. And I was like, I don't think Huxley would adjust to that very well. He's been in public school. Like he's not going to want to do that. They just kept hard selling me and pressuring me to get Huxley into that school. And I'm so happy that I was outed and Hey, Noreen and everything happened. Um, I mean, report them to the Department of Education in Jeff City. We could geoplanet Jane, but as far as I know, it's legit. I mean, as far as I know, he's, you know, I remember when Dan was trying, Dan and Amanda, they're the, the directors of the school. I remember when they were trying to get it open and they had huge fundraisers and everybody was donating massive amounts of money to get that because we were going to be the only Scientology school in the whole tri-state area and the whole Midwest. So it was such a big deal. So they were hardcore recruiting and they were hardcore fundraising for it. So I'm pretty sure I remember them getting like permits and things like that. It's not just like a setup in a basement. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's known. I don't know. Yeah, the whole thing is definitely a money-making scam. Yeah. <laughs> Does Dan throw fax machines at the kids? I hope not. Um, it's cult training, 100%, Shelly. Yeah, cave ma'am, I my gut the whole time. I was I I just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And I was like, but I can't, but he can't, but I can't for this reason. And you know, another thing was my mother. My mother doesn't uh she loves me, but she loves Huxley. My mom would kill for that kid. My mom becomes an absolute psycho mother bear when it comes to Huxley. She'll even say, you know, you're an adult, you know whatever to you, but not my grandson. Like my mom freaks the F out, which I love that. I love that about her. Um, I remember her saying to me over and over, do not put him in that school. She would say over my dead fucking body. If I find out you put him in that school, like my mom hated Scientology. And she even said, she was like, if you want to do Scientology, fine. But that's where I draw the line. Don't put my grandson in there. And she was, she was right too. So I had that pressure coming down on me too. Um, so yeah, guys, that's what that bus was. Whatever you saw, I don't know. I didn't see what Natalie talked about, but that's what it was. And it is, so Sam, my, my brother-in-law was the teacher and the driver of the bus. He quit. And then they put their, their nanny who they recruited. Dan recruited his nanny. I'll just say this real quick. And I don't know if you guys want to hear this or not. And then I do want to talk about my Sephora stuff. Dan recorded, re, recruited his nanny. Dan has three children. Okay. I'm going to try to break this down so you understand it. I know all of this because I was close friends with Dan and Amanda when all of this went down. I was hanging out at their house. I was coming over all the time. Amanda and I were doing shit together all the time. The nanny was between the ages of 11 and 13 when they recruited her to become their nanny. They pulled her out of public school. They moved her in to Dan and Amanda's house. Okay. I know this. I was there. This isn't some hearsay story. I was there. And um, she is one of four or five sisters of a Scientology family. Okay. The mom and the dad are both on staff at the org. Dan, I don't know, Zelda. Dan went to the parents of this, these staff members and said, we want your daughter to be our nanny. And they said, sure, take her. Cause they had five children and these people were super poor. Okay. Like dirt poor, couldn't afford their kids anyway. Dan takes her. She was maybe 12 years old. Maybe I know this girl moves her into their house and says, your pay 
will be your lodging. You get free lodging living here. And we're going to take you with us on trips when we go to flag for training and stuff. And you will work around the clock. Um, they pulled the girl out of school. Believe it. I was there. They pulled the girl out of school and uh, she became their full-time nanny. And I remember Amanda, specifically the mother, Dan's wife, was super mean to this girl. Super mean to her because she was a 12 year old and she was annoying to them and she was not doing things right. And Amanda kept having to like train her to get, you know, get it down. Like Amanda was such a bitch about like routines with her kids and like real regimented and like they can't eat this and they can't eat that. You need to cook this properly. I remember Amanda being so mean to this 12 year old girl. Like, no, you're not feeding them at the right time. They need to have this snack. They need to have enough protein for when they go on course. They need to eat this before they go in session. Yeah. Treated this girl like absolute shit. Human trafficking to a T. And she's still their nanny. It's all she knows. They pulled her out of school. And uh, so Sam, my brother-in-law, quit and got a different job. Well, the nanny is now the teacher there. And that was one of the reasons I also didn't put Huxley in that school. Because I was like, I'm not spending $1,000 a month, whether it's my money or not, on Huxley to go get educated at a school that's supposed to be prestigious by a 14-year-old teacher. Like this girl... They were like, well, he's gone. We're going to put you in now. Not only are you going to nanny our children, you're going to be the teacher of the school. I was like, that's bullshit. She's not qualified. She's 14 years old. Yeah. Yep. That's the case. So that's what a good person, people, the O'Connors are, guys. The O'Connors are, if you were Scientologists, you would know exactly who they are. They are highly, highly worshipped. Not to, Aaron Smith Levin has said this, not just in the Kansas City area. Aaron will tell you, Dan O'Connor is known worldwide in the Church of Scientology. He's a big effing deal. Huge. Very highly respected. Very, very highly regarded. Yeah, that's Dan O'Connor. And I know him very, very well. Very personally, I know him very well. I've known him my entire life. And uh, he's a real piece of shit. He's a disgusting human being. Um, turn them in. I don't, how do you turn them in? I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, go check out all the C word members and save them. How do you do it when they say everything's fine? We're not breaking the law. We're not here against our will. What do you do? If you went and turned him in, you know what would happen? Her parents would swoop in and go, that's not true. We're her parents. We've been caring for her. Everything's fine. They would totally clean it up and make it look like everything's fine. I know it's not because I was there. I witnessed it. I don't know, Gretchen only. I don't know. But I can tell you, that girl, her, the, the underage girl, their um, nanny, that poor girl has been so weirdly, she's like a piece of veal. She is so awkward. She is not social. She is like glazed over, um, Oh yeah. In 82, it was the cars, Jeff Kittinger and me and Casey Mo. Well, Alex Carr is still there. He's training to be the ED because Liz Carr was training to be the ED and she dropped dead at 61 years old. Two years ago, I went to her funeral. I lived with Alex and Liz Carr when I was on staff. Jeff Kittinger was my stepfather. My mother married Jeff Kittinger. So I know these people very well. Um, but yeah, the, um, Yes, these people were my friends. It's all I knew. Um, but that girl, as much, what I'm trying to say is she's super awkward. Why? It's not her fault. She's never been socialized. She's like a piece of veal, right? She was put to work just like I was at a very young age against our will. We were recruited and told, this is what you're going to be doing now. You're not going to school anymore. So she's super, super awkward. And it just goes to show you, she's had a ton of Scientology training. Dan has forced all that shit down her throat. Oh, that was the other thing. That was her pay was free room and board um, and uh, free training. He was going to pay for her training. Lucky her. How sweet. And I remember Dan saying that was a big deal. He was like, you're going to get free training from us. You lived with the cars. Yep. I lived with the cars for years. Yep. Um. 
that girl is too young to legally work. Well, Burbo boss, I mean, I love what you're saying, but so was I. So were all the other kids. I mean, they don't give a shit. They will hide that. You know, it's all we know. And, and nobody reports. I mean, nobody checks in on it. Yeah. That girl is super messed up though. I'm telling you, I want to name her, but I'm not going to, cause she's a minor and that just isn't right. And it wouldn't, I mean, I'm not vindictive like that. I don't want to like, I don't want any harm to come to the girl. But what I'm saying is I feel so bad for her because I remember trying to have conversations with her and it was just like, nobody home. You know why? She was going to school and she had four other sisters, siblings. She was ripped out of her home and put into the basement of Dan O'Connor's house and told, you're going to take care of these kids now. I mean, imagine what that does to your personality. You don't have one. I mean, she's just, she's just a slave. Noreen, tell me it's a cult without telling me it's a cult. Yeah, totally. It's so sad. It's really effed up. If her parents are dirt poor and she makes no cash, how does she handle personal needs? Ev, they pay for everything. Um, they pay for everything. The O'Connors, she lives under their roof. So like, I'm sure they make sure she has toothpaste, shampoo. I'm sure they feed her, but she gets the bare minimum, right? To take care of their children and be the teacher for that school. They're not going to starve the girl to death. They need her to be alive, right? So that's it. Child Protective Services. I don't know, GeoPlanet Jane. I mean, this isn't as shocking. You guys are all freaked out and shocked right now. It doesn't shock me. I was there. I know what it's like. I don't know. It's like, doesn't even really bother me other than I can't stand those people. And I think they should be exposed, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. How could she be a teacher when she doesn't have an education herself? I know. It's pretty bizarre. Religious freedom. That's right, Kristen. Uh, yeah, Zelda. As a matter of fact, Jeff told me the other day, there's like, there's, you can't take a kid out of school at it by a certain, like under 16, maybe in Missouri. Um, so aren't there laws about kids getting proper education in America? Yes but they break them all the time because nobody finds out. I mean, they didn't know that I was pulled out of school and recruited and put on staff. Who's going to check on that? And you know what? Liz Carr, Rosalang, Liz Carr had Abby Carr. Liz and Alex had Abby Carr. Abby Carr is five years younger than me. She was there when I joined staff. So I was 13. Um, she was eight. Um, I get it, Paula Puffer. I get it. She was eight years old and never went to school. They just brought her on staff every day. She went on course all day. And I remember asking that once. I said, why don't you go to school? And she was like, well, if the state ever comes or checks, I'm homeschooled. She was like, we're homeschooling me. And I was like, but this isn't homeschooling. You're just going on course all day studying L. Ron Hubbard. And she was like, but it's homeschool. I was like, oh my God, the kid never went to school. Yeah, maybe, maybe our lawyer friend Zach could. And you know, guys, she's untouchable. You think that Dan doesn't already have some kind of a plan about this? I mean, they're prepared, especially because they know I have a channel and I'm eventually probably going to talk about this. Yeah, maybe this video will help, right? I don't know, Blake, but I mean, the, guys, it's like what Abby told me when I first started on staff. And she was like, I'm homeschooled. Like, we're homeschooled. You think they don't have some kind of a plan in place for like, if somebody comes a knocking, I'm sure. Um, I'm, I, I just think they have their asses covered. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. These kids are off the radar. No teachers or peers to report them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, of course it's against the law. We're not going to let something like that stop us. I mean, they don't care. Scientologists are entitled assholes and they make their own laws. It truly is like a giant whole separate life. It's a whole separate world. They abide by their own laws. They don't talk to outsiders. They don't go anywhere outside of the church. It's, it, it, think about that in your mind for a minute. Visualize that. They go from a Scientology school. They are bused to the church. Their parents pick them up and take them home. And they do it all over again. They're not going on vacations. They don't do normal shit. They don't go to movies. They don't go out to the mall and walk around and have fun and get a fucking pretzel. They're not doing any of that. They are 
blinders. They are pieces of veal, just like I was. That's what I mean. It's like I was in the darkness my whole life. Everything's so damn bright now because I'm seeing the sun. So I don't know, Joe, any goth clubs? I don't go to clubs, dude. Otherwise I would love to know the answer to that because um, I would love to see you. Talk about slipping through the cracks. Yes, Shelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, how did I marry Fred in Scientology? Um, they really, it's very frowned upon, Yarn Prepper. It's very frowned upon. Actually, Fred, not so much. It was more Jeff. Fred was so old. They didn't really expect me to get him in and recruit him. Jeff, they were all over me about. They expected me to get Jeff in and start paying for services and get him up the bridge and all of that. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrible situation. I'm sorry that I'm not more upset about it. It's just, I came from it doesn't really shock me. I'm not really even bothered by it. I think because I'm just, I, I hope that doesn't upset you guys, but I'm pretty desensitized to the fact that Dan took her and did that. I mean, I did all kinds of shit I didn't want to do and was against my will at that age. It just doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. Jana, um, welcome, Josh. I never shared this to you, but I love animals so much too. I have six dogs, three cats, four horses, and two goats. Oh my God, I want your life. If I had, if I had more land, I'd have more. I love my fur babies just to share. I love that girl. And I would love to come visit you. Um, yeah, it's superhuman trafficking. I am very disassociated for that from that. Yeah, it's just old hat to me. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't even really bother me that much. It's just, it was just a story I know about. I don't, yeah. I mean, please don't be upset with me about that. It's just, it doesn't do anything to me. It doesn't change my way of thinking one way or the other. That's, that's how I was brought up. Um, Reese, you know what is wrong and what is right. Yeah, Jane. I mean, you know, Hopefully uh, this will raise some awareness. I don't, it's sad, but I can see why if you grew up and it doesn't shock you. Yeah. Um, what do you guys want me to do? I can tell you right now, Dan O'Connor has a plan for this. He's got, I mean, he doesn't just have her guys. He's got three children in a fake school going to course every day after school. I doubt any of that's probably legal or healthy, of course, um, they cover their tracks. Yeah, they really cover their tracks, guys. So, I don't know. I don't feel like there's much we can do. <laughs> probably. I'll probably lose more subs. Don't be upset about the DMs you'll get later for not being up in arms. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are going to reach out and go, I'm really mad at you for not reacting to that. No, they won't. I don't really have a lot of hate like that coming my way. I think Tommy does. I don't. Yeah, look at the Amish people. No one questions them either. Um, Aaron knows this entire story, by the way. I mean, I guess I could refresh his memory. Um yeah, Anita's car, Anita card. It's the norm for you to. He was doing it again. It's the norm for you, deplorable to us, but you talking about it going to make the change ultimately. I mean, I think it's good that I'm exposing it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was very normal. It was very normal for me. Hi. Okay. I'm so happy that they won. Yeah, they, they swept them. They beat them four times in a row. 
I know that's amazing. My lawyer friend, Zach might give you some advice about it. Yeah. I think Zach is a good place to start with. It's absolutely baffles me that this country allows Scientology to exist just because of a, look at him showing off. See, he's like, he's like, let me distract you with my cool toy. Um, because of a couple dirty IRS agents, like Scientology literally denies members their constitutional right. Absolutely, Blake. Yeah, go put it in the washing machine for me. That is kind of where I want to start, actually. I was thinking that too, Kim is blue. Maybe talk with your board about this. They might have ideas. So Geoplanet Jane, I'm going to start by talking to the board. Yeah, I don't really see CPS helping either. Bo got the business again. Yeah. Robin, you don't see me as a Scientologist. I see you as a regular person. I'm sad you experienced this shit. Uh, grateful you got out and same talks in the process. Thank you, Robin. I, um, guys, really, I am sorry that it doesn't, I don't seem more upset about it. It's just, I don't know. I lived that life. So I just don't, I mean, it just doesn't, I'm not like, oh my God, I'm so upset. I mean, Dan O'Connor is an evil guy. And I can just say it calmly. It just doesn't do anything for me. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I mean, PJ Mack, I think speaking the truth and your truth will create change. Yeah, exactly. I think talking about it and we can talk about it again and again. This is why though, I mean, I've got a lot of stories like this. I just don't talk about it. You know, it's just not, I don't even think about it. I only talked about it today because somebody asked me about it. Um, thank you, Shelly. I mean, that's just kind of the end of it, guys. Did they make Huxley take courses? They tried to. Yeah, they signed him up. It's totally true. We all respond to trauma in our, in our own ways. Disassociating is likely one of your coping. I know it is. Yeah, I disassociate for sure. Simone, why can't people just be? Why can't we just, uh, why can't we just love you for you? Please, Reese, don't take another video down based off people's mean comments. They can F off into the fervor. I won't. Thank you for saying that. I don't use the word flap. Do other ex Scientologists use that word? I always hated that word when I was in the church. So no, um, I haven't talked about labor exploitation tracking on my channel either, because I don't want my abuser to find out what I've, that I've gone public. Interesting, Tara. Sorry. Oh, Huxley hated Scientology, Kestrel. Yeah. I agree, Blake. Scientology is a cancer and wasn't designed for humans. It should be illegal. Scientology is super, super. The more I, I, I just think about all the training and everything I was told and everything I know, it's just so disgusting. It's meant, I think about just like all the things that I was told, right? All the things that like were absolutes, okay? And I don't even talk about them. We could talk about them sometime. I mean, it's not because I don't want to. It's just, it's so insane. If you guys knew some of this stuff, it's insane, and I think about it and it makes me feel insane now that I think about it. now that I've seen the real world and seen the light. I'm like, it was meant to make me feel crazy. It's like a high, high control form of gaslighting. It was meant to make me feel nuts. I questioned everything in my mind. You know, the, the feeling of, I mean, I don't know about you guys, I'm pretty intuitive. And I would constantly be like, that doesn't feel right that doesn't seem right. Like just, and I don't mean present time shit. I'm talking about like, you came from this, you're 76 trillion years old. You were put in a uh, chair and the chair was spun around and there were flashes of lights everywhere. And you were put through the, um, you know, they played movies and everything so that you would forget. And they, uh, there were men in white coats that came and they drugged you. And I remember being told all this stuff coming from an ice cube. I was told I, was, I came from an ice cube. Guys, I remember thinking all those times, like, uh-huh. I remember looking at the person going, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I remember in my mind going, this is, doesn't feel right. I wasn't to the point where I was like, this is fucking crazy. I wasn't thinking that, okay? I was, I was tied down enough. I didn't have enough freedom to feel that way but I definitely had like little bells and whistles, just little alarms going off going, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't seem right. 
but that's okay. No, that, that's right. That's right. Cause I'm, I, I'm forced to think that's right. Bye Bo. Thanks for being here. So it's nutty stuff and you may not even want to hear about it. It's crazy stuff. It's really crazy stuff, you know? So yeah. Um, I'm sorry though. And sh Jane, you said something. Oh, I understand how you are and what and who you are. So don't worry. This does not change my, okay. Well, thank you, Jane. I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, imagine being brought up in this shit day one and you're told you're not human or a child. You're a big being, but not bigger than me or a literal ice cube. That's what I was told. You're not a child. You're not a human being. I mean, I was told that all the time. You came from an ice cube from 76 trillion years ago. You were dumped here. You were implanted. You went through the implant station. That's why when you look at the sun and you sneeze, that's from an engram from being born. Because when you came out of the vaginal canal, there was a light put on you and it made you sneeze. And so every time a person sneezes, when they look at the sun, L. Ron Hubbard said that's what that is from. It's the sneezing engram. Like all this stuff's nuts, guys. I'm trying to forget it, but I'm happy to talk to you about it. It's just nuts. It's nuts. It's insane. And it's like Blake said, it's a cancer because it's made to drive a person insane. Um, and I feel like I did snap and break a few times. I mean, it definitely snapped and broke my mind quite a few times through each decade. And, um, I'm embarrassed about it. And that's one of the reasons that I get embarrassed about, I don't know anything. I don't know simple basic shit outside into the real world still. And I'm not educated. And uh, that's a little tiny, tiny dip of your toe into why I say things like I'm not as smart as the rest or I'm stupid because you guys were born into the world. And, and I know you all have trauma. I'm not downplaying that. But your trauma is different than mine as far as you didn't come up thinking you came from an ice cube. Like I, you know, was told that I came from a different home planet. Like Scientologists talk like this, like, okay, we're from different home planets. You're not from the same planet then. They're literally talking about where they came from 76 trillion fucking years ago. They're such entitled assholes, but they talk like that. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I'm trying to hold a conversation with all of you. And that's the kind of shit that's in my mind. That's what my mind has been filled with since I was little. So that's why I thought Philadelphia was a state. I didn't know. I don't even know what's in Europe. When people say Europe, I'm like, oh, I don't know what Europe is. I think the UK is there. That's all I know. I don't know shit about anything. So we, none of that's important. <laughs> We didn't learn that. So I feel fairly embarrassed and educated and stupid most of the time. Um, my sister, George, the ice cube story. I was just told, um, thank you, Robin. I was told, um, my father told me when I was like five that I was dumped here in, a, in an ice cube. And uh, it was terrifying for me because I associated with all kinds of things. And I have always been terrified of the ocean, scared, scared of the ocean. And they told me that's why I'm afraid of the ocean because I was floating around in an ice cube for eons and it's just nuts. So I'm trying to deprogram. It's not your fault, Reese. We're uh, taking all out of seriously because this is a serious issue. This literally cannot be allowed to circulate anywhere. There's no human beings anymore. Um, and I appreciate you guys supporting me. Like I know that I can talk about this stuff with you guys, because I feel safe talking about it. But that's one of the reasons I don't go deep down the Scientology rabbit hole, because it's ugly. It's ugly, guys. There are some things that I have been told that I learned in session. I don't want to get my GED, Gretchen. I have no interest in doing that now. Um, or you, Shelly. No, I don't want to. Thank you, Joel. I love Joel. Not having formal education doesn't make you stupid. In fact, I think you're really intelligent. Thank you. I know that. And I appreciate that. I've come a long way. But um, just with all the training I've had, too, on not showing and having emotion, that's one of the reasons you guys can tell me something shocking or I can talk about something shocking. And I'm like, meh. I mean, 
I was told this is the dumping planet. We're not even human. So like Jeff will come to me with some crazy ass shit in the news. And he's like, did you hear that so-and-so or 500 people died? And I'm like, mm. Mm -hmm. I don't react like a normal person does still. I'm just kind of like, Meh, I don't know. Uh, should I be upset? I, I don't know. I just, I feel bad. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm starting to learn how to be more human about stuff, but I just feel like a fucking retard. I'm sorry to use the R word and I don't mean that offensively, but I mean it toward myself. I just feel like I don't know anything. I just feel like when I go out in public, yeah. I know, Skyrider. Guys, please don't take offense to that word. I said that once before and people got upset. I don't mean it like that. I just mean it like I feel so dull. I feel so dense. And when I go out in public and I talk to people and they talk about their education and the college, I just glaze over and I feel so stupid. I just feel like I don't want to talk about this much more because I'm going to start crying. I just get embarrassed that I don't fucking know basic shit. I'm almost 40 years old and I don't know basic, basic stuff. And sometimes people give me a look like, you didn't know that? <laughs> when I went to Huxley's game last week, somebody was making fun of me because I didn't understand anything about baseball, nothing. And this guy looked at me and laughed because he said something about they're walking, it's walking it back or something. And I was like, I don't know what that, and he was like, you don't know what that means? And he was like, <laughs> and he looked at Jeff and he went, explain it to her. <laughs> and I was like, I want to go home. I just, I don't know, dude. I didn't watch sports. I didn't grow up on that. So pardon me for not knowing anything. And it's more me, not the guy, right? But it's my, it's my um, insecurity about it. Thank you, Positive Life. I know Tara smiling. Not everybody understands sports, but you can understand what I'm trying to say. <sighs> sorry, guys. I kind of went on a rant there. And again, I'm sorry I said the R word. It's not, it's not how I meant it. I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm talking about myself. <sighs> Thank you, Skyrider. I'm not, this isn't a pity party, by the way. It's just, that's what goes through my mind. I don't actually dig up the real Scientology because I'm not sure you guys really want to know about it. It's awful. It's, it's just rots to the core. It's ugly, ugly stuff that I was told. And um... Geoplanet Jane, I appreciate that. The thing is, guys, I don't really want to know about that stuff. I complain about it. I'm like, I don't know about Europe and all that. I don't even really want to know. I think it's still too soon for me. Um, like people have said, why don't you go get your GED? I shy away from that. I run away from that. I'm like, nope, I don't want to. It's because I don't believe in myself yet enough to go, I'm smart enough to do that. I can go get a GED because I know that I can accomplish it. I can't. I can't. I don't know basic stuff and I don't want to let myself down. I don't want to try, but I also don't even want to, I just am not ready to look in the direction. Does that make sense? Yes, Angela, let me show you my Sephora stuff because a couple people do want to see it. And I just want to run through it real fast. Um, I hope I didn't offend anybody. I, I really do apologize. I just, that's one of the reasons I don't think I go into a lot of Scientology stuff because it's, it's infuriating. It really is. It's like you really are from, a, yes, it is. It really is. It's like you really are from a foreign planet and need to learn some basic facts. I truly feel like all the time, guys, all the time, I feel like I was just brought here to this planet all the time. That's how I feel in my mind. I'm like, how did, how do you guys, how do earthlings like, again, remember I said, it's like the end of um, city of angels. When Nicholas Cage jumps, he becomes, he becomes human from an angel. Remember? And he jumps and he's like, this is blood. This is blood. And he's, and people are like, what the hell? That's sometimes how I feel. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is how we're supposed to, oh, okay. 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 Like, I feel like I'm learning a new language and it's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing, but I also have all of you to share it with. And you show me things, you teach me things, you support me. And I feel safe and comfortable being here talking with you about it. 
Thank you, Brian Lucas. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Yeah, I, I didn't want anyone to take offense to me saying what I said because I didn't mean it that way. Sorry, Sephora, get into it. Everyone's like, bring the Sephora stuff, change the subject. Thank you, Shelly. I just want to get there faster. I know I love that movie, Joe. Not yet. I didn't listen to your song yet. I need to go do that. And by the way, guys, in 40 minutes, I'll be on Tommy's channel on the lifeboat. Um, if you want to call in, I know not all of you like to watch Tommy and I, so that's okay. Um, yeah, J Jane, it's too soon for me to go look into that. Love you lives mom. Um, but I do love the call in stuff on the lifeboat. It really, really just makes me feel so happy. So if you guys want to come over to the lifeboat, come watch it. Cause it's fun. Um, thank you, Cajun. Thank you guys. Anyway. Okay. Switching to a really weird, abruptly switching to a different subject. Yadira, I love you girl. Okay. This is called moon and back and I wanted to try it. I don't know if anybody's tried it. It's just, these are all Sephora stuff's 30% off. Um, it's a soft gloss. Cause I tried it on my hand in the store and it's not sticky. So I was like, why not? Thank you, GeoPlanet Jane. Thank you for understanding GeoPlanet Jane. I was actually worried because you love me and I love you. And I know I got to change my glasses. Um, and I don't want you to not love me because of what I said. So thank you for saying that, Jane. This is the coolest gloss ever. It says glossed. It's a Sephora gloss. Look at the color. It's like shimmery iridescent. Um, this color number is seven. And it's what I have on over this. And I liked it. Tinker mom, thank you. God, I hope I didn't lose more people tonight with my shitty mouth. Um, I try, so these, it's a Sephora soft and matte lipstick. Hi Barbie. I got two of them. I have not tried them yet, but I loved the consistency in the store. This is number 15 and this is number 90. And I thought the colors looked amazing. Those are cute, cute, cute. We'll have to play with these. I'll let you guys know what I think. Um, and then I got some more lip stains. I'm addicted to these freaking lip stains. Um, this color looked like so much fun. It's number 93 and oh my God, for summer, it's like more red, but it's got a little bit of pink to it. And I'm excited. Barbie, I'm glad you made it. Katie Fulton. Yeah. I mean, I just don't know sports and I never will. I don't understand it. Number 89. I thought that was a really soft, pretty pink. And we know we love these, these lip stains. These last, like I've told you guys a million times. Yeah, I love berry colors, Janet. These last more than my lip stains. Uh, do they burn? Not at all. And a lot of people can attest to them in here. What's the name of that school? I don't know, honestly. Um, it's an applied scholastics is the school, like what they run on. And I think that's what it is. Bye, Paula. Um, but these are better than, I have NARS. I uh, swatch them, sure. Which one do you want me to swatch? Um, I have NARS lip stains. I have Tom Ford. I have uh, uh, Chanel. Um, I have... Uh, I'm just trying to say Dior. I have all the expensive stuff and this is better. These are $15 full price. They're 10 bucks right now on sale. It's insane. Okay. Number 89. That's what I'm opening. It was like a really pretty soft pink. I feel bad because we're at the two hour mark and I hate going too long because I feel like it pisses people off. Okay. Here's number 89. Ooh. It's just like a really nice soft pink. These are Sephora brand. Yep, just the just the lip stain. This is number 93 and this rocked my world. I love you guys. Sorry, I ranted. I feel like there's two nights in a row now that I'm going to piss people off. Okay. 
Okay, this is, what did I say? Number 93. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Look at that sweet red. I don't love Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, no. Um, it's like a really fun, like, cherry red. Okay, these... Guys, this looked like fun. So this is number 90. This is supposed to be a lip stain too. God dang. It's like they don't want you to try it. Hold on. Is it just, oh. Okay. No one saw that, right? Okay. This is also a stain, okay? But it's a little bit thinner. It's almost kind of glossy, but it's supposed to dry like a stain. And I love, it's a little more sheer. And see how it's like shiny, but then it dries. Ooh, look at that color. Miss Marcy, welcome. Oh, yes. I want to go on a date in this real bad. Guys, this kind of stuff makes me want to go make out and just like have a lot of sex. Okay. So this is also the same one. I haven't tried these yet. If anybody else has tried these, uh, yeah, Skywriter, look at the color. I love like an aubergine. I love something with a touch of like a purpley berry. God, this gets me so excited. Ooh yeah, get it, girl. Look at that, Katie. Did I waste money on all the same colors? Is it just me? Do these all look like the same color? Is there a trend here? Okay, so that's all four of those. And then here, I know, Jimena, guys, order these online. Come on. Okay. So this is just, it's called the moon and back. I don't wear lip gloss by itself. I put it over a lipstick unless I'm going to be making out with someone. See, it's just like a light baby pink. Do I wear foundation? No, I wear BB cream. Okay, this one you can't really see, but Katie, I like this one. Look at, it's just, yeah, you can't see it, but it has like a million little like shimmery iridescent. Guys, look. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, Katie, I don't know why I'm just talking to Katie. I also needed a new mattifying powder for my forehead. I usually buy the expensive ones, Laura Mercier, NARS. They're all the damn same. Okay. This was 20 bucks and it's marked down to $7 plus 30% off. I was like, I'm going to lose money if I don't buy this. So I grabbed that. It's not my color. It was the last one. And I didn't care because I'm just going to dab it into my T-zone anyway, because see how shiny I am. I mattified before the show with the expensive NARS stuff and I'm oily, greasy. I'm like a soul food cook. So it doesn't matter. Oh, and one other thing, they have a new mascara and I just thought, why not? It was super cheap um, and it just looked like a good time. And I think it was like $12. Oh, you know what, Christine, the cooter powder. Do they let you wear makeup in Scientology? Yeah, you can wear makeup. You cannot wear any fragrance though, including like my Moroccan oil shampoo. Can't use it. Um, no, I have it, Force of Delightful Nature. Here's the deal, Christine, the cooter powder is um, from Lush and it's called uh, Sleepy, I think. But the other cooter powder is called Silky Undies and that's from Lush and it smells more coconutty. I like the Sleepy one because it's their classic scent and it's got lavender and I just love how my cooter smells like lavender and I think she loves it too. Um, I am made to sell products, home shopping network. I would love to, I would have so much fun. I would totally jazz it up and style it up and make jokes. Um, it's super weird, Blake. And I like to smell good. I just said my cooter likes to smell good. I want to smell good. So it's a problem. If you're a Scientologist, you can't be smelling good. Okay. So cute. So cute. Right now, these are 15% off all the Sephora stuff. So I was like, why not? Right. I mean, I'm not in Scientology. Let's celebrate a little bit. 
Um, super cute though, guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. Katie, I'm still just talking to Katie. That's Katie. Okay. So guys, these two weirdos, it says soft, matte, and easy. I like a matte lipstick because I'm wasting money. Otherwise any other lipstick, it falls off. It just, it just doesn't stay on. And now that my job is on YouTube for two hours, flapping away at my gums, I need this shit to stay. Um, so Katie, these two things went on, as you saw, glidey, but look, see it dried. It's drying. See how it's drying matte? Help me. Okay. Those are good colors, guys. Those are going to be so cute for summer. Like I'm going to go out on a lot of dates. I'm going to tell you right now. And if, if he doesn't take me on a date, then he's done. I love Moroccan oil stuff for my hair. I love the smell. Okay. I'm going to go because we've been on for five hours and I just feel like I was offensive and then it was funny and then it got sad and, um, I probably just shouldn't be here, but I love you guys a lot. Um, and I can help you with your makeup needs, cooter needs. I just probably shouldn't talk about anything else. Good makeout colors. Joe, I love you. Don't you agree? I feel like they're definitely um, good colors to attract and make out with a man. Uh, whoops, look at that. Crap, Tommy is calling me for his next live. Okay, guys, I'm going to end. I love you all and uh, come over to Lifeboat. I'm going to keep chatting. Oh my God. I hope you guys come over because I want you to call in. I want to talk to you guys. Okay. I love you. Um, here comes Fred. Sorry, I was weird. See you tomorrow. Love you guys. I have therapy tomorrow. Um, how can I, there we go. Okay. Here comes Fred. Love you guys. <laughs>